In this video, we will see the earliest deadline first scheduling algorithm for real time processes. As we know, these real time processes, they arrive at regular intervals in the system and they are, so they are periodic in nature and they require the CPU for some time and we are assuming that they require the CPU for the same amount of time every time they are entering the system. So in this algorithm, the priority of a process is assigned according to its deadline. So assume that at time 0, we have both processes P1 and P2 in the system. So whatever is the deadline of these processes, that will decide the priority of the process. So earlier the deadline, higher the priority will be for that process. So consider that for P1, process P1, the period is 50. Period is 50 means that it will arrive in the system at an interval of 50 time units. So it arrives over here at time unit 50. So currently it was at time 0, then it arrives at 50, then it arrives at 100 and then it arrives at 150. Its time burst is 25. That means whenever it is scheduled, it will require the CPU for 25 time units. So here if it is being given the CPU, it will use the CPU for the 25 time units it requires it for. Suppose for process P2, the period is 80. Currently it is at, in the system it has arrived at time unit 0. That means next it will arrive at 80 and then next it will arrive at 160. And whenever it is scheduled, it will require the CPU for 35 time units. So as we can see, the period of process P1 is 50 and the period of process P2 is 80. Here we assume that we want that the process has to be serviced before it arrives next. That means if it has arrived at time 0, then P1 should be serviced before it arrives next at 50. That means its deadline is 50. When it comes at 50, it should be serviced before it arrives next at 100. So when it arrives over here, then its deadline will become 100. When it comes at 100, its deadline will become 150 and so on. Similarly for P2, currently it is at time 0. So now its next deadline is 80. That means before it arrives in the system again, it should be serviced. So we can consider that the period is also the deadline of the, these processes. So here if the period of process P1 is 50 and the period of process P2 is 80, we see that the deadline of process P1 is earlier. So P1 will be given a higher priority. Currently P1 and P2 are both in the system but P1 is being given a higher priority because its deadline is 50 whereas that of P2 is 80. So P1 will be scheduled first and it requires the CPU for 25 time units. So it will use the CPU and it will release it at 25 and at this time P2 will be given the CPU. When P2 starts running at time unit 50, P1 will arrive again in the system. Now at this point of time, the deadline of P1 is 100. But the deadline of P2 which is already running is 80. So P2 will not be preempted. P2 will keep running and now after P2 has finished, then only P1 will be given. So if the deadline is later for P1, now P2 will not be preempted. Once it once P2 releases the CPU at time unit 60, then P1 will be scheduled and it will use it for 25 time units and finish at 85, which is still earlier than the deadline 100.
So P1 has not missed its deadline. Now what will happen? At 80, while P1 was running, P2 has arrived in the system. So at this point in time, the deadline of P1 is 100, but the deadline of P2 is 160. So P1 will continue running and only after that P2 will be given the CPU. Again P2 will use it for 35 time units. Even though P1 comes over here, P2 will keep running and it will finish off till it has completed till 35 time units. So this is the earliest deadline first scheduling algorithm. EDF, it does not require that the processes be periodic or that the process uses the constant amount of CPU burst time though we have assumed it in the example over here but that is not a necessary requirement. The only requirement for this scheduling algorithm is that the process whenever it enters the system it needs to announce its deadline to the scheduler and based on the deadline the scheduler now uh, decides whether the current process which is running should be preempted or not.